Hi guys. Good morning and welcome to Medic Mike's Laboratory. Happy New Year to all and I hope you all had a great Christmas and I want to thank you guys at the end of the year for watching, liking, subscribing. Hey tell other people about the channel too if you all liked it. Anyhow, um, it is December 31st, 2022 and today I thought my video would be a little different. Um, I'm going to step back from G.I. Joe just a little bit and I'm going to show you some of the toys that are like 1-6 or roughly 1-6 in scale that are not Hasbro or G.I. Joe that go pretty well with him for adventures. Um, this is more along the lines of the adventure team obviously because some of the stuff is kind of you know fantastical and, and kind of out of futuristic is the word I guess I'm saying. So anyhow um, I got like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven toys. Some vintage, some newer, that go well with Joe, as I said. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at them. Okay, so here are the toys in question. With with my mini me there in this field for scale. We have Robo Raptor, Migos 14 inch creature from the Black Lagoon, playing Mantis's reproduction of the Captain Action nemesis, Dr. Evil, Robbie the Robot, Indo Raptor, Max Steele's Entech motorcycle and missile launcher. And a vintage working big track. Awesome, hey? All right, let's take a look at these. I'm going to grab them up and put them on the floor so i got plenty of room to show you what they do. And we'll start with, on the right-hand side here, with Max Steel stuff, I think. Okay, first up is Max's Entech dirt bike. Um, Max Steel was a Mattel character. Or Mattel action figure from the 2000s, early 2000s. And he had what they called N-Tech, which was kind of like a takeoff on the Bionic Man or the Atomic Man, where he could plug himself into his equipment to make it do various stuff. Uh, this bike, I don't remember all the stuff that it does, but as a basic motorcycle, it's got a nice suspension. Uh, it's Nice, you know, halfway decent detailing. Not too terrible. And I got this really cheap, too. Toys R Us was selling them on sale about shit, 20 years ago. I think I bought this thing. Anyhow, it's been sitting in a box down here downstairs for quite a while. And now it's time to bring it out and bring it back to life, I think. We'll paint her up a little bit. Fix it up, and I think I'll do something with it for my power. Anyways, Max Steel, Mattel, and Tech Motorbike. Next up is something really cool. I honestly do not recall what the uh, what the title of this toy is, but it's like a little missile launcher, portable missile launcher. It has a couple missiles in the back, and of course. Like any good toy. And you could sharpen them up and put a needle in the end of them and poke somebody's eye out too, I suppose, if you wanted to. <laughs> it also has this neat little takeoff. Um, it looks like a targeting computer or targeting radar. A little antenna on there. And it comes off of the main pack in order you can use it by hand. But the neatest thing about it, you know, yeah, and it shoots, of course. And uh, the neatest thing about it, though, is when you aim the uh, rocket launcher. How cool is that, huh? I thought that was pretty neat. But anyhow, again, it'd be a good addition for the adventure team or some sort of modern futuristic warfare. Uh, does come apart at the bottom here. 
it folds up for transportability this pulls off too it doesn't come off easily so i'm not going to do that but it does come off and uh all in all a neat very cool toy a very cool accessory for any one six figure you could paint it up and make it adventure team yellow if you wanted i suppose or whatever else you want to do and i paid like 10 bucks for this thing at a antique store well worth it very cool i love these newer electronic toys as well as the older ones simply because they can do so much more with the electronics now anyways max steels Entech rocket launcher all right next up jurassic park dinosaurs are awesome I wasn't a huge, I was a huge fan of the movie, but the sequels kind of suck. I don't like most of the sequels, but hey, the originals are great. But the dinosaur toys that they've put out to go along, to complement these movies are awesome. This is Indoraptor. I got him at Walmart a few years back. It was like 20 bucks. And as you can see, this figure has great articulation for a 1-6 scale dino, the best I've ever seen. The joints have gotten a little loose over the years, but he's very articulated. He can do all kinds of positions. I think what I'm going to do is use the uh, use the old uh, Teflon tape trick or rubber band trick in the joints, you know, to kind of stiffen them up again. So, anyhow. Nice paint detail. Mouth opens and closes a couple of different dimensions like that. Interior of the mouth is pretty well detailed. I've used him in a photo story or two, and he does work out pretty well. Anyway, Indoraptor. From Walmart. About 20 bucks. Um, I did happen to be in Walmart a couple days back, and there are still some of these on the shelves, so it's still available. There are other ones that are equally as cool. I have the uh, Tyrannosaur, one of the bigger ones. Obviously, not the scale for Joel for an actual Tyrannosaur, but it works out well for a smaller uh, Carnosaur. And uh, check out that section if you like the dinosaurs to work with Joel. In the toy section at Walmart or Myers as well, and Target I'm sure has this stuff too. Uh, good buy, good price, nice toy, good quality. All right, next up. <laughs> next up we have Robbie the Robot. For those of you who don't know, probably some of my younger viewers, you may not know that uh, Robbie is a robot. That was built originally for the movie Forbidden Planet back in 1956. Um, the movie was an outer space adventure concerning a military spaceship landing on the planet Altair IV in response to a distress signal. Um, a lot of the movie was similar to Star Trek. It had a lot of similar concepts as far as the crew relationships and stuff like that. But anyway, um, Robbie here was the... Uh, the, the guy who was running the the uh, outpost on Altair Four, this was his personal like servant robot. He runs on two AA batteries in each foot down there in those compartments. And they had him at Walmart a few years ago for about it was twenty bucks. Anyhow, I bought this one from Fred J because I couldn't find one at my regular at my Walmart here in town. So, and I'm glad I got him. He's a pretty cool toy. Let's see what he can do. He's got an off switch, on off switch in the back here. In this position, the off position, you hit this button here. Oops, let's move that over a little bit. There we go. For your convenience, I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. Yeah, Neil, those are actual lines from the movie. You can see he lights up and he blinks and his arms move around a bit.
But, and all of that's pretty cool, but where he really shines is when you hit that switch and push it to the on position, and then push his on button, check this out. Pretty cool, huh? And he'll keep doing that as long as you leave that switch on. <laughs> So anyhow, pretty cool. He's got a lot of nice detail, and he's a pretty faithful replica to the robot in the movie. I've seen the movie a million times. I am a sci-fi, 50 sci-fi fan. Um, this robot was also used in a lot of other productions over the years after that movie. Um, and he's in an episode of Lost in Space. And let's see. I believe you have seen him in a Twilight Zone episode. Anyhow. He's been around a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised to learn that this particular robot is still sitting in a studio somewhere waiting to be used one more time. Anyhow, let's move on to the next one. Put Robbie off to the side here. Give me one minute, be right back. And here we have Dr. Evil. Uh, Dr. Evil was a Captain Action nemesis back in the 60s. And I think he's even cooler than Captain Action. I mean, Captain Action's got nothing on this guy. Excellent, excellent evil character with some cool stuff. Uh, I just love the way his brain sticks out. That's just evil. <laughs> he needs some some eyebrows that look a little eviler than that. Because he's got no eyebrows. But anyhow, very cool figure. He comes with this ray gun type thing. And this, I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be, but... Again, it looks good on an evil character from outer space. Um, he's strung to, he's strung in a, with rubber bands and hooks, similar to G.I. Joe. But some of the other joints are more similar to a Marx figure, as you can see looking up by the hands here. Or excuse me, that's not the one I was looking for. Uh, let's see here. Let's take his outfit off. Um, this, by the way, is not the outfit he came in. He came in like a Nehru jacket which looked really bad. So I ordered this, plus a couple other items from Third Son Books, and I'll show you those in a minute. You can see how his elbow joints are a little more similar to Mark's figures. And you can see he's got hook and rubber band in there. Sooner or later, those rubber bands will give out. I'll just restrain them, G.I. Joe style with elastic then. That he's strung very similar to a G.I. Joe or to a vintage Joe. Again, you can see how the hooks go into the thigh, you know, the thighs down there and the rubber band. Anyway, um, I bought this, uh, uh, this alternate outfit from Third Son Books. They are a great supplier and they have cool stuff. And it was well worth, I think I paid 25 bucks, 29.99, something like that for it. And it looks a lot better on him as an evil space alien guy than the original goofy Nehru 660s Nehru jacket thing did. So, anyhow, I'm happy with the transformation on that. And he came with, see those sandals painted onto the boots? He came with a pair of sandals over bare feet. <laughs> Not hardly uh, appropriate for a spaceman. But, you know, they're like an individual pair of sand rubber sandals that went over bare feet. Definitely the boots are definite uh, improvement. Um, also from Third Son Books to go with this figure, I bought this. This is his Evil Eye computer console thingy. And you see it does that. and It's just kind of cool. It's nicely, uh, it comes in two pieces. And it's nicely detail painted. The eyeball looks pretty cool. The perfect computer for an evil scientist from outer space. Yeah. 
And these two other pieces here came off of a Star Trek Zephram Co uh, Cochran figure. It was like only eight inches tall. And I picked that up for a song. But anyhow, the pieces were the similar blue to match, you know, his skin and his boots and stuff. And they look sufficiently alien that I thought they'd go pretty good with him. So this is now Dr. Evil's equipment. Anyhow, Dr. Evil rep reproduction from playing, or excuse me, playing Mantis toys. They also have a Green Hornet and I think a Captain Action and several other, uh, several other retro uh, hero action figures. Uh, this company built pretty good. This figure looks like it's pretty well constructed. And, uh, yeah, I guess they're well worth it. I paid 10 bucks for it. 10 bucks. That's it. Anyway, onward to the next one. This guy, in my opinion, is one of the coolest figures I've ever seen. Um, this is a Meagle 14 inch feature from the Black Lagoon. Um, as you can see, He's got a pretty good face, you know, head sculpt detail. Looks pretty good. The paint job could be a little better, I think, but it does the shape and the features on the head and such are pretty, pretty good. They're pretty well uh, copied a movie costume pretty well. Uh, again, as a fan of 50s sci-fi, I know this stuff. <laughs> the hands, and he has about the same range of motion as a vintage G.I. Joe. Hand spin. Go like this in a classic position of rage and terror. Rah! Yeah, pretty cool. I used him in one video and one uh in one photo story already, and I was really pleased with the way it turned out. Um, negatives on this guy, there's a couple. Oh, price wasn't a negative either though. Forty bucks in the box, not too terrible. And as I pointed out before, the scale on this guy is pretty good for a GI Joe monster. Should be a little taller than the good guys. Um, these foot joints here are a bit loose. He does tend to do this number if he's not perfectly positioned on the shelf. I will likely screw around a little bit and see if I can tighten those up a touch. Um, the thing that I really freaked out on when I first seen him and I almost didn't buy it was this uh, nylon bodysuit that he comes in to represent his scales and his fins and all of that stuff. Uh, this plastic piece here, the chest scales come off, and then you can see there's a Velcro closure back here. Um, after using him in the water for the photo story and looking at him on the shelf for a while and everything, I've come to the conclusion that even though it's a cheaper alternative to actually sculpting the whole figure, you know, like this with the scales and stuff, I kept the price within range that you could buy it without having to spend 200 bucks. Like if you remember, Cotswold had a, uh, a very, very, very nice creature from the Black Lagoon figure. But that thing was like $200, if I remember correctly. And that's just a little much for me for a single figure. But I will say that that Cots figure, wherever they got it from, BBI or someplace like that, no doubt, was pretty damned awesome. But this is a nice, cheaper substitute, great for photo stories. He looks cool on the shelf. So if you're into, you know, old monster movies or want to have another nemesis for your Joe, there he is, Creature from the Black Lagoon, 14 inches tall, from Mego. And I would just like to mention Mego again for a minute. Um, as you, a lot of you guys probably know who are into other figures as well as Joe's, Mego has been coming out with reproductions of a lot of their older figures, the Planet of the Apes, the Star Trek guys, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I haven't bought any of them because I just simply can't afford to collect anything else. But they look good. I know some people who collect them and have them and are happy with them. So if that's your bag, check out those new Mego figures. All right. Next up, this is a Roboraptor. And I got this around 2005, I think. My uh, stepson bought this for me. Unfortunately, he doesn't work. In preparation for this video, I tried to put batteries in him and get him to work, and he worked just fine for a long time, so I don't know what the problem is. I'll have to take him apart and see if I can fix him. But when, when he works, when he hit the switch, you know, he's like this. You know, he walks like this. Hang on a minute here, let's go. Like I said, he, his legs move and he walks. 
across the floor and his tail wags and his head wags as he's doing it. Yeah, like I said, he's a pretty neat looking toy. And again, as a evil doctor's construction or a guard sentry for Dr. Evil's, <laughs> Dr. Evil's way or something like that. Anyway, he's a pretty cool toy. He's about one sixth in scale. He's about the same size as the Indoraptor. So the scale match is pretty good for Joe. Anyhow, any, uh, just cool. I love motorized and electronic toys. They're neat. Anyhow, Roboraptor. I don't remember who the hell made this one. Let me take a look here. Nope, all I'm getting is made in China, obviously. <laughs> I have seen these in stores recently, too. And they have much larger versions, which are pretty damn cool, too. I mean, they had one that was like two feet long. But in any event, another worthy addition to your toy of to your toy collection. All right, now last but not least, the big one. This is Big Track. I want to go into a little more detail about this thing. Because it's a kind of a landmark in toys. Um, this is a Mattel or a Milton Brady product. And, oops, excuse me. I have to turn this, pause it for just a sec. Okay. Uh, this is a big track scale next to Joe. Um, obviously, uh, the scale is not 1.6 for what it's supposed to be. However, as a cargo drone or some kind of exploration probe or something like that, it would fit the bill quite nicely, I think. Um, little, I said, a little history on these now. Um, this was one of the first electronic toys. This toy has a computer chip in here. I've had this thing completely apart. It didn't work when I bought it. I had to fix it. I'm going to point out a couple of the neater things about it. And one of the not neater things. <laughs> this thing uses a 9-volt battery to power the chip. And underneath in the battery compartment here, there's four D cells. The only we powered wheels on it are the two center ones. And it has these O-rings on there to give it some grip. These ones just roll freely. And you see it's got a little bit of a suspension. But anyway, <clears throat> make sounds and then you enter commands through the keyboard on the back. This has a very ingenious drive system. There are inside under here in the box, in the control box, you know, to put the gears and stuff that make the motor move. There are, <coughs> excuse me, there are a set of magnets in here, two on each side. When the thing is going forward, the magnets hold these two wheels in the same position so it can roll straight forward without veering off to either side. You know, like if it, uh, if it should like uh, run into like running at, partly on a mat and on the cart or on the concrete with different tractions that would cause one wheel to spin faster than the other those magnets keep the thing going in a straight line when you, it turns when you want to make a turn with it what happens is, is that the chip goes ahead and lowers the power somewhat or <coughs> excuse me raises the power somewhat to break the attraction of the magnets so the thing can spin around rather ingenious they figured out how to keep it going in a straight line and how to how to do it. Maybe someday I will take, I have another one, maybe someday I will take that one apart and show the mechanics of the box. But uh, that information is also, and pictures are also available online, which is how I learned how to, you know, take it apart and fix it. But anyhow, this is what it does. And this is one of the coolest toys ever. It's got this transport trailer which plugs into using just a simple old like a uh, speaker plug. I forget what they call them, but it's just like the plug you would use for speakers into an old sound system. And it plugs into up here. And I'll run it through its test sequence and show you a little bit about what else it can do. Works best on concrete or smooth floors. It will work on carpet, but not quite as well. So let me turn it on. the switch here and then you hit this button which says test let's get up close in there
and it does a test of itself. Fires its phaser. And that's the test run that it does. It's supposed to raise the dump bed during that test run, but I'm not sure of the condition of these batteries. Let me make sure it's plugged all the way in as well. All right, let's try it again. There we go. Yep, uh, the dump bed operates on one battery. There's a little motor and a trigger wire in there. <laughs> the whole thing is very sophisticated for when it was made, like 79, 1980. I think they sold them up to around 83 or 84. Um, impressive what they could do with it. I'm going to clear a little more space here and I'm gonna put it through a few more paces and show you how the keyboard works. <coughs> it also includes a uh, beeper warning that if you le accidentally leave it on, it'll beep at you and tell you that it's on. So that's also cool for saving the batteries because I'll tell you one thing about, there it goes. <laughs> There's one thing about this toy that I found and it sucks batteries, boy. It eats batteries. God, does it eat batteries. But anyhow, in order to make it do its thing, you use this keyboard here. And the commands are pretty simple. Um, what you do is, this is the test button that I just used before. And you can, every time you push this button, like you got forward, backwards, left, and right. You push the button for forward, for example, once. And then you hit on the keyboard, how many, that turned that off for a minute. And you hit on the keyboard how many vehicle lengths you want it to move. Uh, each, every time you tell it that, it's one vehicle length that it interprets that as. So, example, if I go, go forward, whoops, turn it on again, duh, go forward, and one, and go, it'll go approximately one vehicle length. Or you can go like this. You go forward two, for example, and then backwards two, for example, and it should put you pretty much back in the same place, right? Hit the go button, and away we go. As you can see, even with that trailer on there, it goes, uh, it stays pretty straight because of that magnetic uh, axle like I was telling you about. All right, let's do something a little more complicated. Let's go forward, one, to the left, one, and forward, two, go. Hmm, something did not go right there, but okay. Or you can do this. Backwards. One, two. Oops. Okay, uh, to turn, I have to consult the book again. To make it turn, you have to enter the direction of the turn, and then you have to enter the degrees. I'd forgotten about that. So you wanted to make a 90 degree right turn, I just hit the right button. 
or is it 360? Shit, you know what? I can't remember. Give me one sec to take a look at the instructions again. Okay, here we go. Now I figured it out because I couldn't remember. Uh, it says on here to turn the, it runs in a three in a 60 degrees like this. You see the, the clock thing? So, 15 degrees will give you a full right turn. And a left and a right. So, let's go for it. We're gonna press. Whoops, first we're gonna turn it back on. Then we're gonna press this. And then we're gonna go 15 degrees and then go. There we go. And I made a turn. Now to make combination commands like that. We're gonna do this. We can go one length forward to the right. One and five degrees, and then forward again, say two more, and then fire twice. Pretty cool. Anyhow, by following the instructions in here and <laughs> entering the commands on the keyboard the way that the chip is set up to understand them. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with this thing. Um, next, I think I'll just give you a little close-up of it, of all the pieces, and uh, and then we'll bring this video to a close, I think. Right back. Now, while researching searching how to fix it and everything, I read a lot of other stuff about it. Um, there's a lot of people who have went ahead and used Raspberry Pis and stuff like that in order to uh, make it a more sophisticated computer-controlled vehicle. Um, to my mind, building a whole new chassis that would be really capable with maybe tracks and six-wheel drive and stuff would probably be a little better idea. But on the whole, you can see that it's got some pretty nice detail on it. Stickers are not in too great a shape. But oh well, they're all there. Uh, the battery box I had to epoxy a bit because it was totally, completely gunked up with green crap because somebody left batteries in there. Um, I was thinking maybe, maybe putting some like uh, a track of some sort around all of the wheels might be kind of cool. But. This is it, this is the big track. It is definitely one of the coolest toys I own and I'm really glad I bought it. And I think, like I said, I have another one over there in the box. I think I will go ahead and kind of rebuild that into some sort of drone for the adventure team, like I was uh, saying before. Well, anyhow, uh, these are some of the toys that work well. Joe, there's some of the cooler toys of the past shit, 20 odd years, 30, 40 years. And uh, they're well worth every buck that you spend on them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope maybe it gave you some ideas for other things you can do with your Joes and involving other toys. Um, I will finish the talker repair video at some point this weekend, I hope. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a very happy new year. Stock up on lots of ibuprofen for tomorrow if you're going to party. <laughs> and seriously, don't drink and drive, guys. I drive for a living. I've seen bad shit out there. Stay safe. All right? All right. Later. <laughs>